go, AJ. Yep. Last one, come on. Ah. 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 Yep. Ah. Strong. Ah. 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 Come on. Ah. Kamara, you're the reason that uh, Colby Covington uh, hates Jimmy now. <laughs> oh, really? Because they had you in studio, and i that's the day I missed you because I had something at my kid's school or something. But uh, so then he called in when you were here, and they feel like uh, – Chris the producer set him up. No, he thought it was I really set him Chris up. Chris the producer, I think. He thought I up. set him up, but I was like, I didn't. I don't book the show. I because was, they know he has a beef no, with. Uh, yeah. he's, he's just a pussy. Nobody set him <laughs> up. Like, don't be a pussy. You, we called in for a show. You're doing a, a show. You're preparing for a fight, and this is part of doing the media. Yeah. I just happened to be in studio. We get, basically got double booked that day. Yeah. I tried to keep it as professional as possible. Yeah. But when you continue to talk out of your ass like an idiot saying, oh, well, after this fight, I'm going to get my private jet and fly back home. You don't have a fucking private jet. You live in the dorms at American Top Team. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, when you when when you talk out of your ass, you, you can see, you, you know, it, it's secure. You can feel whatever way you want to feel, but nobody set him up. I kept it as professional as I could in that interview, even though I wanted to, to basically call him a jackass for all the shit that he was talking but, you know, he could, Jimmy, don't worry about him. He can blame whoever he wants to blame. He's not going to do anything he sees you except roll his eyes like a little girl. Ferguson, I don't know if you saw this, but posted something about you guys running into each other at UFC 181, and his coach told him something that you can't big league a big leaguer. Did you, did you see this post, and do you know what he's talking about? I did. I I, I heard about the post. I, I don't follow anybody on social media like that, so I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure when he posted it, but yeah, I do. I know what he's talking about. It was uh, UFC 181, and that was a long time ago. I don't like. And uh, I was getting ready to fight Gilbert Melendez at the time. And he tried to come train at, at a gym that I was already training at. And my coach is at his coach is to wait or come back when, I'm, when our session was done because most likely we would be fighting each other. So if he took that as disrespect, that's on him. I mean, that's his, that's his common sense. You're not going to go watch somebody train that you're going to be fighting potentially. So, that's, I mean, that's on him. So that's what he's talking about. All these, what was that? Like, I think that was four years ago, almost four years ago, UFC 191. If somebody can remember something from four years ago, that's crazy to me. Like, I, I don't even remember UFC 226. <laughs> So when you when you first heard about this, you actually had to think about what he was talking about. Well, I had I had to get uh, Duke actually tell me what he was talking about. Duke was talking on the phone about it. He was like, "Yeah, I remember when you were training?" Because I was training. I, I I had no part of that. Like my coach is like, "His coach is the wait till we are done." Wow. And, uh, if that's a disrespect, then then bring. I, I feel like he's reaching, man. So if he, if he needs if he needs some motivation, use what he's got to use, man. Because I'm, I'm coming. Kamara, and, and I would love to see you fight both of those guys or either of those guys, but if Woodley gets hurt and you step in, it would just be a main event fight between you and Till, correct? I don't know what they're calling it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to put that title on, out there. I mean, if they want to throw interim titles around, I don't mind that, you know? So it, 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 it doesn't matter. I don't know what it would be. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is I'm preparing for both guys if anything happens, but obviously preferably – if 
I would rather fight Woodley that night than than kill, but it doesn't matter to me. I mean, both are, both are the big fights. Both are the fights that I, I, I want. I've been wanting, and I think those are the fights that make sense for me. Either one of those fights. Sure. Now. Now, listen, we know in this game people do get hurt, and there's been wacky stuff lately where, you know, whatever, guys don't make weight, and next thing you know, they do fall out. So I understand your your position, but, you know, as a guy that went through many camps, how are you going to approach this for getting ready for a five-round fight? Because it's grueling. It, 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 it's it's. It's brutal getting getting through a training camp normally, and you have a goal. You know you're set to fight, though. That's the the payoff. You're gonna have to go through this camp, and there's a a very good chance you're not gonna be able to fight. So, where's how do you stay motivated for that? Yeah, you, you're right, Matt. It, it, it's tough, but the big mm-hmm. thing with with when you have a set fight and you you you're, you're training for that fight and that opponent. A big thing is you, you get to deal, you have to deal with the stressors of, of man, I got to do this good. My opponent is great at this. I got to make sure that I work this. I, I'm perfect there and, and things like that. And then you start to kind of doubts creep in your mind. Did I prepare enough for my opponent? Did I, did I study them enough? And so the good thing about my situation is I don't have to worry about that. It's just I'm just training. And my style anyways, I, I can fight anybody. There's not one thing that I that absolutely, you know, that I, I'm not good at. I, I'm good at everything. It's just a matter of me polishing myself, just worrying about myself, making sure that I, I, I am in the shape enough to go five rounds and, and, and push the pace and, and, and basically finish the fight wherever that fight goes. So that, that's the that's big thing for me is, is I don't have to worry about just training for a specific guy. You know, I kind of, I kind of have the best of it right now. I'm just relaxed. I'm just training hard, and whoever it is, I'll be ready to fight. Daniel Cormier now, obviously the heavyweight champion of the UFC, as still the light heavyweight champion. If John Jones comes back at heavyweight and it gets booked for November the third at UFC 230, who wins that? Who wins that? Because we saw Daniel Cormier take out Stipe Miocic and he looked great at heavyweight, Dan. So who wins the third fight with them at a different weight? You know, dare I say it, I think John Jones wins it. <laughs> I think John Jones wins it at any weight class. You know, whether, whether he's you know whether he's clean or not, I, I think he's been clean the majority of his career. I don't think, I think the mistakes that he's made have been short-sightedness, you know, not, not being... Uh, not being too observant of his uh, of his of his diet of what he's taking in during uh, during his you know um, what's it called the testing period the uh, the window of of competition. I mean, the th- the thing he tested positive for that he'd had after the weigh-ins was just a, a ridiculous oversight. Surely, I, I kind of have to f- forgive him a little bit and think that a lot of it is just is just him not being a professional. And I hate to say that, but it's. That that's that's more what stands out than anything else is is just his lack of professionalism. But I think that he's probably learned these lessons now, and I think that will probably allow him to become the best version of himself that he's ever going to be. And he is he's so dangerous, no matter what weight he's at. He's got the reach of Stefan Struve. You've got to you've got to keep that in mind when he steps up to heavyweight. Yep, I think John Jones beats him at Conkers. He beats him at Tiddlywinks. He beats him at table tennis. I think the only thing DC's favourite in would be a hot dog eating contest. To be honest, <laughs> oh double chin. Yeah, do you know I'd watch all of those contests between John Jones and Daniel Cormier. I don't think there has ever been a better rivalry, especially because of the fact that he lost one of the bouts through a drug suspension. I don't, can you think of a better rivalry than those two? I don't know. Eubank Ben was pretty good. <laughs> Eubank Ben was good, but there's, in the UFC, there's been some. Inc- yeah, well, there's been some better fights that have that have thrown rubber matches and things like that. Obviously, for me, this rivalry is it, it's been entertaining, but it's been so one sided when the action gets down to it. In UFC history, we've seen a lot more fights go one way than the other, and then we've needed a, a rubber match decider. But this is certainly a a, fi- a a rivalry that will continue. I think Cormier right now will feel as the heavyweight champion. The advantages are back towards him because he could have he could he won't be dieting. He will be full size. He he won't. He's in a weight class that he's never lost a fight in before. I think that's why there's been no noise of him going back down to light heavy. But I don't think it's going to come next either. I still think Daniel Cormier will fight Brock Lesnar next, and I think John Jones is going to have to wait his turn next spring. Oh come on! There's no wait in the turn. I think Brock Lesnar's a big name, but if John Jones was back at two thirty, DC would take it. <laughs> 
I don't know. But I, I, I don't it, know. I think Brock Lesnar is a big name that Don, Daniel Cormier would love to have on his resume, and that's a far easier fight than John Jones. But imagine how much it would burn if John Jones did swoop in and beat Daniel oh. Cormier and then sit there ready for Brock Lesnar exactly. to come back. Cormier, I mean, that would... Cormier wouldn't be able to show his, his face in his own, own, own household. Come on, the That would be the nail in the coffin. That would be really well, bad. I, I kind of never want to see that happen no, to DC me neither. because I've already seen it. him cry You know, <laughs> after his losses. It's heartbreaking because I, I know what it feels like to lose, and but not on that kind of stage, not with that kind of pressure and that kind of rivalry. I mean, that's like someone stealing your soul, surely. Yeah, the stage has been set now with the Brock Lesnar pantomime, nose to nose after the Stipe victory. That's got to play out. That narrative has got to play out. And Daniel Cormier deserves to have his hand raised over a stricken uh, Brock Lesnar. But this fight will happen. It will be John Jones next year, and John Jones will be the new heavyweight champion. 